you're here, here you are thrust into the uh, into the ocean, and, and there's just chaos and turmoil at this point. I mean, how do you even get off the boat? Uh, 900 of us got in the water. It meant that 300, uh, they were just uh, suddenly drowned below decks because the bow being cut off, we become a funnel. But of the 900 that got in the water, the Navy lost us. So literally, we swam with the sharks. Uh, dehydrated bodies, mass hallucination from drinking salt water, and 110 degree sun, and uh, we're swimming nearly constantly. I was in a group of 80, and uh, by the third day at noon, there's only 17 of us, so uh, you can use your own imagination and uh, wonder what in the world is taking place out there. I'll yield back to you, sir. Wow. And in the book, um, it's called Out of Depth, an unforgettable WW2 story of survival, courage, and the sinking of the USS Indianapolis. And Edgar Harrell is recounting that tragic moment when the ship went down and getting into the water. And now you're, you're kind of, you're stuck. I mean, as you say, the Navy did nothing for five days before we get to you in the water. And I mean, were there were there were there prayers being lifted up? Was it just hysteria? I and mean, you mentioned hallucinations. And what else is sort of the scene in these water? I mean, do, I don't know about you. You speak to sort of you know some of the boys even seen some of these kind of sharks before, let alone know you're in the water with them. Well, there were sharks. Uh, well, the first morning, of course, we went down about fourteen minutes past midnight, and uh, we lost several boys before morning because many of them were had multiple breaks in the body, been blown up against the bulkheads, and maybe mass burns and so on. So we lost maybe a dozen boys before morning. But when morning came, um, we had uh, we had company. There were sharks swimming around us. You could see big fins uh, protruding out of the water, but seemingly out of fairness to them, they weren't attacking us. But it isn't wrong to someone maybe that had been injured. He has a high temperature and he's hallucinating, and he can imagine that he sees an oasis out there, and he breaks out of the group, and he swims out to his imagination, and uh, you hear a blood-curdling scream, and you look, and uh, you see the capon go under, and then momentarily, then like a fish cork, a capon brings the body back to the surface, but then you see all kinds of fins. All the blood is attacking, attracting many, many sharks. Well, you dare not to go and check to see who your body might have been, but sometime later you check the different ones and you find out that the, the bottom torso is gone or he's been disemboweled. Maybe a leg or an arm is gone. So uh, we're going to experience that just many, many times the next uh, four and a half days, sir. How um, the book really starts to deal with your emotional trials and you know trying to keep your own well-being in order to you know, help people stay as this group, keep keep together as sort of a pack now and that kind of thing. And um, w what are some of the things that are running through your head at this point? Okay, in order to stay together, we had a real problem because eight or ten foot swells and you come up on a swell and you, you know, you go one direction, your buddy maybe goes another. So what we learned to do even the first day in order to stay together, and of course when we were surrounded by sharks, and that kind of drove us together, but how do we stay together? We kind of formed a circle, and we that were maybe more able-bodied would fasten our cape out jacket onto a buddy and we'd form a circle, and we'd try to keep everyone in the circle. So as we'd go up on a big 10-foot uh, swell and it would break, we would kind of drift uh, as a unit, and so we could stay together a little better that way. And then... Uh, uh, when you have just a buddy with you, you could uh, kind of lock your legs together and uh, be able to uh, uh, at least relax a bit. But uh, nevertheless, you, you're having to swim because a cape on jacket's not going to last four and a half days. It's uh, 48 hours. You, you're going to take it off and you're going to sit in it. But then you have to keep uh, swimming, so to speak, to keep your head uh, uh, straight and keep that jacket under you or else it'll pitch you in the water and then after a period of time you don't have the energy to pull that um, cape on jacket down under you again.